Today we'll be speaking about the development of the cardiovascular system. The process starts by the establishment and patterning of the primary heart field. The vascular system appears in the middle of the third week of embryonic development. The progenitor heart cells lie in the epiplast, the ectoderm germ layer of the embryo. They migrate from the epiplast cell layer into the vascular layer of lateral plate mesoderm, where they form two structures. The first one, a horseshoe-shaped cluster of cells called the primary heart field, as shown in this picture. Cranial to the neural folds, these cells form portion of the arteria and the entire left ventricle. The other structure is the secondary heart, uh, the, the secondary field of cells reside in the visceral or splanking mesoderm ventral to the pharynx. These cells will form the right ventricle and the outflow tract. Here it's the conus cordis and the truncus arteriosus of the developing heart, which also contribute to the formation of the arteria and caudal, caudal ends of the heart. In details, once, <clears throat> once this cell, once cells establish the primary heart field, they induce by the underlying pharyngeal endoderm to form the cardiac myoblast. So the first structure to be induced is the cardiac myoblast and blood islands, islands of blood distributed in this region. That will form the blood cells and the vessels by the process of vasculogenesis. With time, the islands unite and form a horseshoe-shaped endothelial-lined tube surrounded by the myoblast cells. This region is known as the cardiogenic region. The cardiogenic region is made of the endothelial-lined tube surrounded by the epithelial cells. And the intraembryonic cavity covering it later will form the pericardial cavity as in this picture, and this is the, <clears throat> the endothelial line tube of the heart. In addition to the cardiogenic region, other blood islands uh, appear bilaterally on each side of the heart tube. Parallel and close to the midline of the embryonic shield, these islands form a pair of longitudinal vessels, vessels these known as the dorsal aorta. With the closure of the neural tube <clears throat> and formation of the brain vesicle, the central nervous system grows cranially and extends over the central cardiogenic region and the future pericardial cavity. This is the cephalic and caudal folding of the embryo. As a result, the bacopharyngeal membrane is pulled forward while the heart the heart and the pericardial cavity move first to the cervical region, then to the thorax. The embryo folds <coughs> laterally as well, resulting in the caudal region of the, um, of the paired cardiac tube merge except at the caudal most ends. So the caudal, the, so the, uh, cardiac tube becomes a single structure in, instead of the horseshoe-shaped tube. The central part of the horseshoe-shaped tube expands to, to form the outflow tract and the ventricle regions. The heart tube at this stage will be formed from three layers, the endoderm, the endocardium, the myocardium, and the epicardium, or the visceral uh, pericardium. And the cardiac tube begins, uh, begins to bend at day 23rd of the embryonic development. The cephalic portion, this will start with the cephalic portion of the tube, bends ventrally, caudally, and to the right, while the caudal portion, or the arterial portion, shift dorsocranially and to the left. This bending, which may be due to cell shape changes, 
creates the cardiac loop and it's completed by the day 28th of the embryonic development. While the cardiac loop is forming, local expansions become visible throughout the length of the tube. Different levels of expansions appear on the, uh, the cardiac loop. And these, the arterial portion, the arterial portion, initially a pear structure, as shown in this picture. Outside the pericardial cavity, outside this cavity, forms a common atrium. This area will form the common atrium and is incorporated in the pericardial cavity with the, when the bending started to take place. The arterioventricular junctions remain narrow, remains narrow and forms the arterioventricular canal. This is a common canal between the common atrium and the common ventricle, which connect the common atrium and the early embryonic ventricle. Here, the cardiac loop consists of the uh, bulbous cordis, ventricle, and the sinus venosus, as shown in, in the picture. The bulbous cordis, in this sense, the or, or the outer flow tract, this is the outer flow tract, and this is the inner flow tract. Here is the common atrium, here is the ventricle, and the bulbous cordis is the outer, outer flow tract. Gives the first one, the trapeculated part of the right, right ventricle, the proximal portion of it, the conus cordis will form the outer flow tract of both ventricles and the truncus arteriosus, the distal part of the bulbous cordis, will form the root and the proximal portion, the roots and the proximal portion of the aorta and the pulmonary artery. The primitive ventricle then, which is then trabeculated and called the primitive left ventricle. Likewise, the trapeculated proximal third of the bulbous cordis is then called the primitive right ventricle. The primitive ventricle will form the primitive left ventricle, while the uh, proximal third of the bulbous cordis will form the primitive right ventricle. The conotruncal portion, as in shown in this picture here, shifts gradually to more medial position. This change in position is a result of formation of two transverse dilatation of the arterium, bulging on each side of the bulbous cordis. And here, the bulbous cordis will separate the common arterium into uh, the left and right arterium.